Yes, sir. <laughs> Say, man, it's Friday, so I advise you to smoke them if you got them, man. We got this new moon in Pisces, y'all, and we're going to get to that other shit in a minute. But first, you should already know, man, that you tuned in with the one that's way more fly than your favorite astrologer. Yeah, whoever you got reading your chart, I'm fly to you. But first, let's just fly. Say, uh, next time I come back to y'all, not today, but next time y'all hear this beat, I'm gonna write something to it. And then, uh, boy. Hey man, I ain't gotta do a lot of talking, man. The music speaks to me, man. And today, I don't want you to just hear me, man. I want you to feel me. So open up your ears, let me crawl into your mind. What it was, man. Y'all already know who it is. And uh, y'all tuned in with priceless knowledge of self. And uh, this shit right here, this ain't shit but some cosmic insight, y'all. And uh, we done played enough and talked enough. It's time to get into that real shit. Or oh, like I like to say that trill shit, okay? And uh, with that being said, man, you know, by request, this right here, this going to be a little something, something about those people that have the black moon Lilith and Taurus in their natal chart. And uh, what we finna talk about probably going to get me cussed out, but I got to keep it all the way through. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is, man. But uh, it's all out of love. And before we actually get into that, <clears throat> what we're going to do first is uh, I'm going to bring you all a little information on 
talk, I mean, on, on the Black Moon Lilith, you know, I'm going to give y'all a little bit of the mythology behind it, a little bit of the history behind it, a little bit of the, you know, energy that comes along with it in your natal chart. Then I'm going to break down the sign of Taurus in a little, you know, quick, brief sense. And then after that, you know, we're going to bring it all to a head and pop that motherfucker. Okay. So without further ado, <laughs> we ain't got nothing else to it but to do. Okay. So in mythology, Lilith comes to us through Judaism or Jewish mythology. And, you know, we all know that Jewish mythology, actually, later on, you know, it founded, you know, Christianity also, which is the basis of, you know, religion or like 60, 70 percent of the world, probably. And, uh, you know, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual, so I'm not going to go into all of that. But anyway, in the story. Lilith and Adam were created at the same time and equally they were the first man in the face and the first man and the first woman. And I say that because I'm being very direct about it. They were created equally. You understand? So all this submissive shit, that's really not what it's about, y'all. <laughs> there is no weaker sex. They were created equally with gifts that come equally and strengths that come equally just in different ways okay and so everything was good with them it all was good in the hood till the time got time to you know consummate the relationship it got time to get nasty and when it was time for that you know everybody worked up adam you know he said man lay down so i can may lay on top of you and uh <laughs> lilith ain't submissive and lilith wasn't feeling that she said hell no nah, motherfucker you lay down so I may lay on top of you. And uh, we all know that uh, Mr. Adam wasn't having that. And so <laughs> they get into it. There's a great calamity and the angel of the Lord comes down to sort it out. They present it and God immediately sides with Adam. And that pisses Lilith the fuck off. And she feels disrespected. And, you know, depending on who you ask, maybe she should. And so she dipped out. And when she dipped out, she went on to become, you know, many different things and many different, you know, different mythologies. Uh, she became to be a demon that stole babies. She became to be a seductress who brought men to their desire, to their demise. She became, you know, Satan's consort or even his wife, you know. She became the mother of all demons in a sense to some, you know. And I don't look at it like that, you know what I'm saying? I just look at it as strong, dark, maybe manipulative, sexual, feminine energy. Okay. And when we talk about this, man, you know, a lot of times people get dark and light mixed up with good and bad. Okay. Everybody has darkness and light in them. You know what I'm saying? That darkness that you have in you is a lot of times what helps you survive in some really fucked up situations, if you knew it or not. Okay. You know, I don't know if y'all watched The Walking Dead, but uh, there's a scene where Rick, the main character of The Walking Dead, he's, he's, he's dying. He's got stabbed and impaled through a pipe through him, right? And he's having, you know, dreams, hallucinations, maybe not. But Shane, who was used to be his best friend, who was ruthless, that he ended up killing, you know, he's there. And, uh, you know, Rick is dying and there's zombies chasing him. And he kind of looks at him and he said, uh, you know, he said, he said, uh, because there was a point where Rick's son was about to get raped earlier on in the series. I don't want to get into the whole fucking series, but, uh, and, uh, Rick was in a jam and Rick fucking bit a dude's throat out. <laughs> and Rick's dying right there and Shane tells him, bro, like, you know, that shit, that shit you did where you ripped that dude's throat out, like, that was me. And there's fucked up shit in the situation, but y'all have to understand, at that moment in time, if you were watching the, the series or the show or whatever, that shit was necessary. That shit was necessary. So don't get... We can get into a whole debate and all that, but don't get darkness and light twisted up. You know what I'm saying? I know that's, that's just some TV bullshit. 
and if and you you would I hope to God nobody ever has to be in a situation like that. You know what I'm saying? And Lilith ain't really about that, but I'm just talking about Lilith and, 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 and I'm talking about dark and light. Okay, so back to the story with Adam and Lilith. She went on to become many different things. You know what I'm saying? But she just re represents dark, feminine, sexual, you know, maybe even manipulative energy, man. Like, it, she, she uses what she has to, to get what she needs to get accomplished. You understand? And I definitely ain't hating on that. And so... Uh, after that, Adam's alone and he's like, fuck, you know, I'm alone. <laughs> and so God basically, he, uh, he took, he put Adam in a sleep, you know, put him in a stupor, took one of his ribs and created Eve, who was made of Adam and made to be where she would lay under Adam. You know, she was made to be submissive to Adam, but that's not women. That's Eve. You understand? Eve was not made of the creator. Lilith was made of the creator. You know what I'm saying? Men and women were created equally of the creator. Eve was made of Adam. You understand? For Adam. You understand? And so, the, and Lilith is in all of us. All of us. That's why she's present in your chart. Okay, so moving on. Also, in Greek mythology, Lilith is known as the Black Moon Hecate. And in astrology, you know, in each person's chart, there's an indicator of dark karma. And that's where the Black Moon Lilith kind of becomes a factor. And like the nose, it's not a real actual celestial body, but more of a certain point or aberration in the chart that, you know, helps us to understand where certain provocations, temptations, turn ons, fears, trials and all kinds of crazy shit my way to person man and it could represent the darker or shadow side of our personality as well as the type of energy that could really you know piss us off or even scare us or you know just put us in great states of trepidation and also you know uh, i can say that it manifests differently you know in masculine and feminine energy and another thing is that there are periods when Lilith is a lot more strong and that's in years of multiples of nine. And I'm not talking about 1909, <coughs> 19, 1908, 1918, 1927, 1936, like that. No, I'm talking about when you're born, when you're nine, when you're 27, when you're 36, when you're 45 and so on and so forth. And so forth. You get what I'm saying? And, does, and that'll start, you know, you know, five months before and like five months after it. And in those years, that's when you might face some shit. You know what I'm saying? That's when, you know, a lot of faithful events you might find occurring. And, you know what I'm saying? That will also begin about like, uh, no, let me see. Let me think. Yeah, I'm right. It'll be like five months before and five months afterwards. But what I'm trying to tell y'all is, man, like, it's not nothing this way because something might happen, something might not happen. It's depending on what you do with it. Like, <clears throat> As I always tell y'all, we talk about every time, like, it's not about what you do, man. It's about how you do it. You understand? It's about how you do it, man. So if you can understand that, embrace that, and do things differently, like, you okay, man. Like, you'll be okay, man. And you got to understand that I, I can't even tell you what's going to happen because I'm not even about predictions anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm about self-awareness. That's what I do. And so when we talk about the sign of Taurus, you know, Taurus is the second sign of the zodiac. It rules over the second house. And, you know, it's ruled by Venus and it lords over the throne. And its symbol is the bull. And its mantra is, I have. <laughs> and this is fixed earth, y'all. And Taurus energy is all about rewards. And that what we each place value in. And money. And Taurus is all about, you know, uh, you know, if Aries is all about kind of loving the game, loving the game for the game, you know, Taurus is all about loving what the game can give you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, think physical pleasures and material goods and reveling in delicious success. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the energy that comes with the Venetian board is also quite tactile with the tender, slightly sensual touch. And wherever Taurus shows up in the chart, it's going to seek to bring comfort, especially that which we derive from, from, from surrounding ourselves with that shit that we find pleasing and soothing and beautiful. And, you know, 
uh, I'll be as stubborn as it comes. Taurus wants us to have the good life in all its guises, whether it be give, whether we've been given the game or, you know, we done it self-made, you know what I'm saying? Because it really, you know, wants us to value everything that we possess, you know, internally, externally, spiritually, materially. And so when we talk about <clears throat> having Lilith in Taurus, oof, it's crucial. <laughs> And uh, like I said, it's probably gonna get me cussed out, <laughs> but it'll be all right, man. So right off the rip, you know, what's most obvious is that folks with Lilith placed here can really have a quite greedy nature and, you know, they could want money and material possessions at all fucking cost, man. <laughs> at all cost. Not only that, you know, they can even reject the spiritual and you know what I'm saying? Ignore their intuition while constantly trying to satisfy their insatiable hunger for all that they find sensually pleasing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that's that's just in this physical sense. You get what I mean? And motherfuckers with this Lilith can be so ingrained in the motherfucking physical world that they have a propensity towards imbalances between the spiritual and the physical because they have such a raw desire to take in so much more than they could ever even possibly, you know, think to give out, man. And, you know, th that's just in one lifetime, too, I could say. And, you know, that, that's a lot to deal with. That's a lot to deal with for them and for the people that deal with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna warn you now that greed in all its forms, in all of its forms, you know what I'm saying? That <laughs> that's the flavor here. That's the flavor. And these are the people who think the motherfucking world owes them something. And the lust for money and the finer life, you know what I'm saying? That that's always just really burning inside of them, and no matter what, whether they're in a higher vibration or a lower vibration, like they gonna want to get some money, and you know it's gonna be an inherent talent that they would probably have too, man. That you know what I'm saying? Uh, that love for money will lead them to do all kinds of devious things, and they've probably already done all kinds of devious things for money, man. And you know that kind of turns them off whether they admit it outwardly or not, you know, which Taurus doesn't admit or say much anyway about what they got going on, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, the thing is, with this, they'll sell out. Hell, they'll sell you out. And, you know what I'm saying? And even further than that, they really don't want to be buyers or sellers, man. They want to be owners, you know what I'm saying? And once they get it, they keep it. They revel and relish in it. And, you know, they can also get, you know what I'm saying, real complacent once they got it too. And on top of that, even when they don't have it, you know what I'm saying, Lilith Hill can get caught up in the lifestyle, which, you know, leads to individual that individual doing anything. And uh, anybody, you know what I'm saying? in order to keep them in a position of embellishment. And you know what I'm saying? Don't ask them for shit either. Don't, not a motherfucking penny. You know what I'm saying? Cause they are always <laughs> gonna say that they don't have it, man. Or have an excuse as to why they can't give it to you anyway. You know what I'm saying? And <coughs> that's not something that, you know, always has to happen, but I ain't lying. And, you know, I'm going to tell you straight up that Taurus Lilith is definitely not above using manipulative tactics or even, you know what I'm saying, provocative advances in order to, you know what I'm saying, gain access to somebody's finances or lifestyle. Because besides the inherent greed, you know what I'm saying, it also breeds jealousy for what other motherfuckers possess. You know what I'm saying? They want your shit. <laughs> And it is what it is. And if they ever feel rejected or if somebody crosses them, man, <laughs> ooh, 
they're going to become extremely stubborn and really usually become real non-compliant and probably just, you know what I'm saying, keep doing the fucking shit that they were doing in the motherfucking first place, regardless of who likes it or motherfucking not. <laughs> and that's kind of just real, man. And if you're in an intimate relationship, you know what I'm saying, that would mean that they're going to deny you, you know what I'm saying, access to all that enormous physical bliss and sexiness that they bring to the motherfucking table, man. And the quickest way to piss them off is to motherfucking play with their motherfucking money or steal from them. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be dead after that. And with the boo, it ain't going to be quick. It ain't going to be quick. And, you know, I mean, that's real, man. What they fear most, I can also say, is poverty and, you know, going homeless, losing their home, going without, man, going hungry. You know what I'm saying? Not being able to enjoy anything. You know what I'm saying? That, that'll fuck them up. They're looking towards people are the type that can really get stuck in relationships that are toxic. You know what I'm saying? Besides the motherfucking sex. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're going to be, they're the type that's going to stay in a fucking toxic relationship because the motherfucking motherfucker putting it down on them like that. You know what I'm saying? That's them, man. And you know what I'm saying? And if they do dip out, it's probably because <laughs> it made more sense from a financial standpoint. <laughs> that's just being real. And you know, this goes even d deeper. They're the type that kind of would resent money because they know what it does to them. You know what I'm saying? And then not to mention, they know what they've done to get it. So it makes them resent they share. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they just know all the things and the evil that comes with the almighty dollar. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I would say that, you know, when it comes to just <laughs> indulgence, this this right here, in all kinds of things, you know what I'm saying, this placement really truly knows no limit, no limit, pardon me. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I don't even know if there's any point in even speculating what, what the fuck, you know, what was going on. And I can also say that, you know, <laughs> Whatever they did, most of the time, they either did it because it made them feel good, or they did it for the money. And uh, they do all kinds of things in both senses. That's real. Now, like I said, when it comes to things of a sexual nature, you know, Lilith and Taurus wants to indulge the senses, and you know in all of his guys in all the most exquisite ways yeah you know and they're insatiably lustful that's just being real and they want to be pleased you know what i'm saying they want you to make them feel good <laughs> you know what i'm saying and if you can do that right you know what i'm saying things will probably get real motherfucking interesting because then they get possessive yeah and you know what I'm saying? Then they want to have their cake and eat it too. You know what I'm saying? Then they use you for physical pleasure. And if you ain't got it, then they work somebody else for <laughs> by the wallet. You know what I'm saying? So good luck. Or the pocketbook or the purse. You know what I'm saying? Because regardless of what they say with this right here. Most of the time, it's purse first and ass last. You know what I'm saying? I come up off their cash. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just keeping it all the way a thousand with y'all, man. And really, the highest manifestation of this is when people learn to just value their spiritual well-being just as much as material possessions or physical pleasure, man. But uh, either way, just remember that. Just because you built like that, it don't mean you have to build like that, man. 
You don't have to feed into the negativity. You don't have to let the bullshit consume you, man. Like we have all this energy present for all of us, man. What you do with it is what you do with it. And then like I always tell you, even beyond that, it ain't about what you do, it's about how you do it, man. And then if you can just remember, just cause you built like that, you don't have to build like that, you be all right, okay? If y'all fooling with me, man, I ask you to please like, share, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? If you're interested in the astrological readings, you can hit me up in the comments below or email me at mr.turner1300 at gmail.com, man. Say, bro, I'm going to be back in a minute with a little something, something about those people that have the Black Moon Lilith and Cancer in their natal chart. And that one's a doozy. <laughs> Y'all keep the trip.